Okay, welcome to the normal childbirth module and the uh, presentation on the maternal pelvis. Um, so the first thing is uh, really to think about um, why is it important that midwives understand about the maternal pelvis um, and how it can impact on our practice during normal childbirth. Well, the, normal, the maternal pelvis um, is important to us for two reasons. Firstly, because it's actually a bony passage through which the fetus has to pass during through through during normal childbirth um, and secondly there are landmarks on the pelvis that we use in as part of our assessment when we're assessing progress of labor so two very important reasons why we need to understand about the maternal pelvis um, so when we talk about the pelvis we talk about two particular aspects of the pelvis we talk about the pelvic girdle um, and we talk about the true pelvis. So I'll quickly uh, just describe what each of these is. Uh, the pelvic girdle is actually a basin-shaped cavity which comprises four bones. Um, and these four bones are two innominate bones. And the innominate bone is this area all the way around here. So it's this big bone here. And we've got two of them. We also talk about the sacrum and we talk about the coccyx. So those four bones together, two innominate bones, a sacrum and a coccyx, make up the pelvic girdle. The other thing that we talk about is the true pelvis. And the true pelvis is particularly uh, relevant to midwifery practice, and it's the bony canal through which the fetus must pass on its journey to being born. Um, and the true pelvis comprises the brim, which is this area here, the cavity, which is the middle part of its passage through the um, pelvic girdle, and the outlet, okay? So two different things, the pelvic girdle and the true pelvis. Okay, so what we're gonna do is actually go back to the concept of the pelvic girdle, and we're gonna be talking about the four bones that make up the pelvic girdle. So the sacrum, um, as we can see, is the wedge-shaped bone that flares out towards the ala. We can also see as well that the sacrum is um, the anterior surface of the sacrum, which is the front surface of the sacrum, is concave. Okay. Now this concave bit here is also known as the hollow of the sacrum. And it's this part here that's quite significant during childbirth. Um, if we look at the back side, the posterior aspect of the sacrum, we can actually see that it's really quite rough and it's rough because it allows the muscles to attach to it quite securely um, to help us in our movement and things. We can see that there's four pairs of holes in the sacrum um, and these holes allow the quite major nerves to come from the spinal cord out from the spinal cord and service our lower parts of our body. The coccyx then, the coccyx sits at the bottom of the sacrum um, and the coccyx is this tiny little bone here at the bottom of the sacrum and the coccyx is four bones that have been fused together. Now the main part of the pelvic girdle is actually the, actually the innominate bone. So the innominate bone, if you remember, is the larger component of the, um, the pelvic girdle um, and the innominate bone is actually three bones that have been fused together over, over our evolution um, and the place that they all join is in this little area here okay and this is called the acetabulum and it's this, um, this cavity in here that the head of our femur, which is our thigh bone, the head of our femur actually locates into the acetabellum um, and attaches our legs to our trunk, really, if you like. When we look at the innominate bone, we can divide it up into three, as I've said, three bones that have fused together. Um, we've got the ilium, which is the um, superior aspect. We've got the ischium, which is the posterior inferior aspect and we've got the pubic bone which is the um, anterior aspect of the innominate bone. So what we're going to do then is look at the ilium and if you can see from the slide we've got the innominate bone divided up into its three bones that it's made up of. So what we're going to be looking at is the ilium so it's the um, it's this part um, of the innominate bone here um, and the 
interestingly, when we, if you put your hands on your hips now, um, the part of the innominate bone that you can actually feel is the crest of the ilium. So when we're putting our hands on our hip bones now, it's actually this part here. So this part here is actually called the iliac crest. So here is the iliac crest, okay? Then if we look at the front aspect of this bone, we've got two spines. We've got the iliac spines and we've got the um, anterior iliac spines at the front and the posterior iliac spines at the back, okay? And we've got superior and inferior. So at the front here, we've got the anterior superior iliac spine and that's there, okay? We've also got the anterior inferior iliac spine, which is here. And then if we come to the back of the back of the um, ilium, then we've got the posterior superior iliac spine, which is here. And then we've also got the posterior inferior iliac spine, which is here, okay? The other point of note on the ilium is the greater sciatic notch. So this area here is called the greater sciatic notch. So that's all the parts of the ilium. Then if we look at the ischium, so the ischium is from two thirds of the acetabellum down to here, the parts of the um, pubic, pu arms of the pubic bone. Um, and there's three points to note on the ischium. Um, and these are, uh, this part here, this is called the ischial tuberosity. Um, and we, when we sit down, and if we put our hands, sit on our hands, the bone that we actually feel that we're sitting on is the ischial tuberosity. So that's that bone there. Um, and then the bone that's most significant really for understanding childbirth and is our marker for um, descent of the fetal head during normal childbirth is this notch here, and this is the ischial um, spine, okay? So that notch there is called the ischial spine, and that's how we gauge descent of the fetal head during, during labour. In between these two here, we've got the other sciatic notch, that's the greater sciatic notch, and that's the lesser sciatic notch, and that's there. Finally, if I turn the um, model round to the front, then we've got the pubic, the pubic bone here. And the pubic bone comprises um, ramus or arms. So we've got the superior ramus of the pubis here. So that's the superior arm. And we've got the um, inferior ramus of the pubic bone, which is down here. Um, and then this, but this section here is actually the um, symphysis pubis. Okay, so this whole area here is a symphysis pubis and commonly two symphysis pubis together, we call it the pubic bone, which is the, what we think of as one bone at the front. So the pubic bone is actually two symphysis pubis that are actually joined together.